Friday. God's Friday. We pray that as you participate in these liturgy and worship in the spaces of your own homes or other places, that we may know something true. Our God's enfolding love for you as we remember the passion, the crucifixion and the death of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty Father, look with mercy on your family, for which the Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given into the hands of those who would put him to death upon the cross, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 52, beginning at the 13th verse through to chapter 53 at the 12th verse. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance, beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which hath not been told them they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And of whom are the arms of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before the Lord like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form. Or majesty that he should that we should look at him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others. A man of suffering and acquainted with infirmities. And as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises we are healed. We are like sheep, having gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has made, laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was 
was a press and was a thinker. Yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb he that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence. And there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When he had made his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and shall prolong, prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquity. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, he was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Response to the psalm. Psalm 31. Father, I put my life in your hands. Father, I put my life in your hands. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, set me free. Into your hands I commend my spirit. It is you who will redeem me. Father, I put my life in your hands. In the face of all my foes, I am a reproach, an object of scorn to my neighbours, and of fear to my friends. Father, I put my life in your hands. Those who see me in the street run far away from me. I am like a dead person, forgotten, in people's hearts, like a thing thrown away. Father, I put my life in your hands. But as for me, I trust in you. I say, you are my God. My life is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of those who hate me. Father, I put my life in your hands. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your love. Be strong, let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. Father, I put my life in your hands. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, beginning at verse 14, 16, and 5, 7. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect 
and been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint John. John 19, verses 1 to 37. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. And they kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. Then the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and crucify him. I find no case against him. They answered him, We have a law. And according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him. But the Jewish leaders cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judgment bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gath. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to the Jewish leaders, Here is your king. And they cried out, Away with him! Away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, 
We have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carried him across by himself. He went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. They crucified him. With him two others, one on one side, with Jesus between them, Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the people read the inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts. One for each soldier. They also took the tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfil what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary's wife, Clodius, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple who he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, in order to fulfil the scriptures, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because the Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. When the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first 
and the other who were, had been crucified with Jesus. So when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They did not break his lips. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And then again, another scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though secretly, because of his fear of the Jewish authorities, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and alloys, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in a linen box, according to the custom burial of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified. And in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby. They lay Jesus there. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Jesus, the eternal wisdom, have mercy on us. The Word made flesh, have mercy on us. Hated by the world, have mercy on us. Sold for thirty pieces of silver, have mercy on us. Sweating blood, in thine agony, have mercy on us. Betrayed by Judas, have mercy on us. Forsaken by your disciples, have mercy on us. Struck on the cheek, have mercy on us. Accused by false witnesses, have mercy on us. Spat on in the face, have mercy on us. Denied by Peter, have mercy on us. Mocked by Herod. Have mercy on us. Scourged by Pilate. Have mercy on us. Rejected by for the rats. Have mercy on us. Loaded with the cross. Have mercy on us. Crowned with thorns. Have mercy. 
feet on us. Strip the thy garments. Have mercy on us. Nailed to the tree. Have mercy on us. Reviled by the Jews. Have mercy on us. Scoffed at by the thief. Have mercy on us. Wounded in the side. Have mercy on us. Shedding your last drop of blood. Have mercy on us. Forsaken by your father. Have mercy on us. Dying for our sins. Have mercy on us. Taken down from the cross. Have mercy on us. Laid in the tomb or sepulchre. Have mercy on us. Rising gloriously. Have mercy on us. Ascending into heaven. Have mercy on us. Sending down the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Jesus, our sacrifice. Have mercy on us. Jesus, our mediator. Have mercy on us. Jesus, our redeemer. Have mercy on us. Be merciful. Spare us, O Lord. From all sin. Lord Jesus, deliver us. From anger and hatred. Lord Jesus, deliver us. From love and revenge. Lord Jesus, deliver us. From unbelief and hardness of heart. Lord Jesus, deliver us. From blasphemy and sacrilege. Lord Jesus, deliver us. From hypocrisy and covetousness. Lord Jesus, deliver us. From the blindness of understanding. Lord Jesus, deliver us. From contempt is my warning. Lord Jesus, deliver us. From relapse after your judgment. Lord Jesus, deliver us. From danger of soul and body. Lord Jesus, deliver us. And from everlasting death. Lord Jesus, deliver us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Hear us, Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. O God, for the redemption of the world was pleased to be born, to be circumcised, to be rejected, to be betrayed, to be bound, to be led to the cross, to be shamefully gazed at, to be falsely accused, to be scourged and turned, torn, to be spat on and crowned with thorns, to be mocked and reviled, to be buffeted and struck with rods, to be stripped, to be nailed to the cross, to be reckoned among thieves, to have gall and vinegar to drink, to be pierced with a lamp through, to be pierced with a lamp through your most holy passion, which we call to mind, and by your holy cross and gracious death, deliver us and lead us to paradise, where, with the thief who was crucified with you, we may behold your glory, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit. God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We adore you, Christ, and we bless you. Lord, by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We adore you, Christ, and we bless you. Lord, by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We adore you, Christ, and we bless you.
my people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I led you out of Egypt from slavery to freedom, but you led me, your Saviour, to the cross. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. Holy God, holy and strong, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. What more could I have done for you? I planted you as my finest vine. But you yielded only bitterness. When I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar to drink, and you pierced your Saviour's side with a lance. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal one, have mercy on us. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, word, and I, I shall be healed. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved us all, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. 